Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this amazing series, brand new series. We're gonna be where 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 your submitted questions are gonna be asked. Um, we're gonna we're we're gonna be asking them to. Um, we're gonna hear amazing answers from Rabbi Yaakov Rahimi. Um, this is being presented by Chazak and Tar Anytime. And uh, each week we're gonna have uh, different themes, but 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 really you can ask a question on any topic, whatever is bothering you, whatever you're interested in um, um, addressing, whatever's on your mind, something maybe a question you didn't ask before, maybe uh, but uh, it will be addressed on this amazing uh, platform every single Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on tarnytime.com/kazaklive. Um, so I was thinking that we should open up with uh, with the, with uh, Marshall. So I heard this from uh, Joey Newcomb. He's a, he's a Tamachacha. He's a Rebbe in the, in uh, Farakaway. He's, he's a renowned singer, as we know. So he so um, I actually I was there when I was recording him. He said this amazing Marshall. He said that that sometimes like you don't even realize what is what's the what, what's what's going on in the inside he said that they have a building you have, you have an unbelievable building that has 20 stories and everything You're like oh, and then you see okay it's just there whatever it is but you don't realize that the foundation of the building that that, that, that that was built in the beginning that is what's keeping it all together so he said he uses a muscle he said that as a parable that that's so too in life that sometimes there's people behind the scenes and they're the people who are keeping everything going so I wanted to use it in a different way and say sometimes um, we just like, like we're running through life and we don't really know what's going on but we need certain uh, fundamentals foundations in our life and then that's how we're going to grow and become the people who are meant to be so as we know that that um, um, the, the Vilma Gon says that one of the main things that we're in this world for is is Tikkun Amidos to improve our character traits. So I was thinking that, that we'll open up with some questions about the, the Yitzhahara, Yitzhah Tov, and then that, that way you'll graduate into correcting our Amidos. So uh, maybe Rabbi Rechimi, if you could uh, just uh, address us, just the fundamental, what is the Yitzhah Tov, Yitzhahara, what is it, what's the difference? Okay, thank you, Rabbi. Okay, so before I answer the question, oh, it's upside down. I do this every day in my house, now I can't do it here. Okay. So before I answer the question, first of all, thank you for all the listeners. Thank you, Torah Anytime. Thank you, Chazak with Thank you, thank you Chacham Rabi, behind all the projects. Um, and if any teenagers, young adults have any questions they want to ask, and Ashkafa, what's the purpose of life? What is life? What is the Yitzhar? Like you say, Yitzhar Torah. All the topics, I'll try to answer them. But if you have anything on top of your head, you're afraid to ask somebody else, whatever it is, send in the question, and we'll try to help and guide as much as possible. B'siyat HaDishmayo. And like you said, Rabbi, the foundation is one of the main things in life. How true it is, the Torah always says, the yisod, the yisod, the foundation has to be correct. It has to be strong. You know, when you're building a building, you don't start building from the fourth floor, then third floor, or fifth floor. The foundation has to be strong. Once the foundation, the yisod is strong, then you can build on top of it. A person has to understand what the purpose of life is. What is he here for? What does it mean to be a Jew? What is the purpose of a Jew? Once you have that clear, once your focus and your mission, your objective is clear, oh, life is so easy. Life only becomes complicated when a person doesn't know what his goal is in his life, and he doesn't know between right and wrong. So that's the first thing I want to say, Rabbi, of the foundation, beautiful mashan. Now to answer your question, what is a Yitzhahara? What is a Yitzhahara Tov? Holy moly. I mean, to answer it fast, I'll say it like this, just to bring out the picture. First, I want to make sure the viewers know that there is something called a Yitzhahara and there's something called a Yitzhahara Tov. In English, our school calls the Yitzhahara, a little translation, not that it will help much, but it's called the evil inclination, right? Yeah. Thank you. See, that was a big word for me. And the Yitzhahara Tov, I guess, will be called the good guy. Okay, every person inside of him has an neshama. He has a soul that came from the kiseh kavot, from the holy place, the holiest place in the world, and that is the chair of God, the chair of Kadosh Baruch Hu. Every one of our neshamot come from there. Every person is extremely, extremely holy and capable of doing the most unbelievable things in this world. However, this neshama, this soul, is hidden inside the body. The body is like a costume around the soul. A person's challenge in life is to do what his soul tells him and not what his body tells him. 
For example, the body tells a person to go after desires, to run after money, or to eat, or to hang out too much in vacations. The body pulls a person, the body tells them to go more to the groundly stuff, more to the world desire stuff. The problem is that the spiritual, the neshama of you, that you have inside of you, tells you, no, connect more to shamayim, connect more to heaven. So the body pulls you down to the ground, which means world desires. And your neshama in you tells you, no, go up. So every day says the Baal Atanya, what's the battle? The battle is, should I go up? Should I go down? Should I go up? Should I go down? Your neshama, which is the Yetzir HaToyev, the good soul in you, which is who you truly are, and who you're always going to be after 120, is going to be your neshama. Tells you, always connect to Hashem, like a candle. It always wants to go up. And the neshama, the Ben Yishcha tells us, and the neshama looks like a candle, like the flame of the candle. Which is why, by the way, when we have a yard site, in English, how do you say yard site? Um... Memorial. Memorial, you light a candle. Why do you light a candle to remember somebody who passed away by the year, a year after they passed away? Because a candle represents a soul and a shama because they have the same figure. And a shama looks like a flame that always wants to go up to Shamaim, always wants to connect to God. What stops it? The body. The body is that we have stopped it because the body tells us connect to the ground, do more sins, go against God, go against the spiritual force, go against heaven. So when you say Yetzer HaTov, that's the soul, that's us, that's truly who we are, our Neshamot, that tells us to learn Torah and do the right thing and follow the Torah, don't follow society. What's the Yetzer HaRa that we have in us? That's the world desires, that's our bodies that tell us, go to the ground, which means connect more to this world, more ground, connect more to this world and go against God. So that's the Yetzer HaRa and that's the Yetzer HaTov. Did I answer that question? Yes. Yes, okay. Now what do you do with them is a different question, but I'm going to ask it. Okay, amazing. Um, just the uh, definition of the words. I wanted to uh, just, um, I forgot to mention the beginning, but to submit a question, email us at events at chazak.org, E V E N T S at C H A Z A Q.org, and it uh, will be um, addressed by Rabbi Rahimi. Um, so now that you just uh, d- defined the, the, these, uh, these terms, these concepts, so. How, um, what are um, some practical tactics to use both forces um, for good? Okay, it's like musical chairs with this mic. Okay, so how do you use the Yetzara and the Yetzara? That's a very complicated question. I mean, uh, I, I, can I just ask a question before that? Yeah. You, do you mind not being okay? That, <laughs> okay. Yeah, we d- we define we define what the yetzara is. The yetzara is the force that we have in us that tells us to do and go up against God. The Torah tells us one thing: our bodies. The yetzara tells us not to listen to Hashem, not to not to grow your spiritual life, but rather your physical life. Now, so why is it there? Why is it that God, why is it that Hashem created this scenario where we have souls, we have an Hashemah, but we're inside bodies that tell us to sin and to go against Hashem? Why did Hashem do that? The answer to that question is, welcome to life. God's whole purpose of this world is for us to overcome the Yetzara. God's whole purpose of creating us and putting us in this world, Olam Azeh, is for us to overcome our bodies and listen to our neshamot, our souls. That's our goal in life. We were put in this world to overcome tests. We were put in this world to overcome desires. Now, this is not easy. This is not going to be easy. But once you know what your mission is in life, life becomes easier. If a person doesn't know what life is about, he's never going to know to even try to overcome his physical desires, to even try to overcome his yetzara. First thing a person needs to know is, why am I even in this world? And the answer to that is, Hashem answered that the reason why you're in this world, because Hashem wants you to overcome the sins. You were born in this world to overcome sins. You were not born in this world to have it easy. Adraba, you were born in this world to be challenged to see how much you can overcome your physical pleasures, how much you can overcome the desires that you want to do naturally. And we have it in us. Every single one of us has the capabilities to win. Every single one of us has the capabilities to, su- to succeed in life and become righteous people and let our neshamot overcome the yetzara. So now when you ask, what do you do with this yetzara? The answer is, for exa- let's make it practical. Let's say a person likes to eat. Okay, a person likes to eat. Now, Eating could be a sin, or eating could be a mitzvah, like every other physical pleasure in life. It could be either a sin, or it could be a holy thing, a mitzvah. Our goal is to take the physical pleasures and make them into a mitzvah. You see, in other religions, 
they don't understand this concept of how you could be so holy, but at the same time be connected to the physical world. So for them, holy means totally disconnected to the physical world. Not eating, not getting married, not having any children. That's a mistake. Judaism teaches us the opposite is true. Your goal is to take the physical pleasure, take the food, take houses, take money, take marriage and make it into a holy situation. Use it as a tool, as a utensil to connect even closer to God. How do you do that? For example, food. Hashem says a person must eat breakfast. That's the halakha. It's not extra credit. The halakha is one should eat breakfast. Why? Because God wants a person to be healthy. On Shabbat, one has to eat. He has to wash on bread. He should try to have meat and chicken. We know we have many mitzvot where a person has to eat. Because Hashem wants you to take this concept of food. He wants you to enjoy this world. Judaism is about enjoying life. He wants you to take this world but make it into a holier thing. How do you make food holy? You're about to have a nice sizzling piece of steak. You know, like when it comes out, it's like talking to you, like it's like moving like that. You're about to cut a piece of steak. You make Baruch, you make the blessing before. Baruch atah Hashem, Elokeinu, Melech HaOlam. You make the blessing before meat. You just took that piece of meat and you made it into a mitzvah and through the food, now you can connect to Hashem. So what do you do with all the desires? You don't chuck it away like other religions. No, no, that is a mistake. Hashem tells you, take all the physical fun. Take everything and make it holy. Have Him in mind. Make it into a mitzvah. Grow with it and use it as a tool to get close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Did I answer your question? Yes. Okay. Now where's the steak? <laughs> um, I wanted to just uh, follow up on a point that you made about about in the beginning you were saying that that that, 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 that we have to use it's hard but but we ha we can win but I wanted to just um, um, uh, address that point that that sometimes like we know the eight are sometimes he's like he's like double faced like like on the one hand before you, before you do the action then oh you should do th th this sin you should you should eat this you should not you, sh you should look at this or whatever the example is and then after you, the person does the wrong thing. Then he said. Then the eight star becomes um, like 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 a big sad. Like, yeah. Oh, you, what are you doing? Like 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 who do you think you are? You're, you're gonna go to you're gonna go to minion now. You're you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna go to the rabbi's class. You're gonna eat kosher. You just did you just did a horrible thing. And then I'll start quoting all these uh, chazal and all these all these teachings and stuff like that uh, and use it against you. So how do you um, overcome, H how do you not let the Eight Sahara win on that front? Not, not the regard. Beautiful question, beautiful question, Robbie. Unbelievable, home run question. Okay, home run question. I'm just going to hold it from that one. Beautiful question, Robbie. Oh, I love that question. Welcome to the Yet Sahara, that devil. Oh, I'm telling you, this Yet Sahara knows how to trick me, and he knows how to trick the world so badly. That's what the Yet Sahara, by the way, he's called the Chacham. He's called the Zaken of Ksilim. He's called like the old man of the genius of making people into fools. Shomar Melech calls the Yet Sarah the king of fools. Why is he the king of fools? Why does Solomon call the Yet Sarah the king of fools? Because he's the best at taking human beings and making them foolish. For example, why is a shoemaker called a shoemaker? Because he knows how to take a shoe and fix the shoe, right? So, so too, the Yet Sarah knows how to take good humans, innocent humans born to the world, about to serve God. He takes them and he brainwashes them, kacha, 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 and he makes them into fools, and then they go up against their own creator. The Yetzara is so strong, and he's so smart, and a person has to be aware. The Yetzara never sleeps. He's always ahead of the game. He always, had a, he always has a game plan of months worth or years worth how he's going to trick the guy, how he's going to make him fall. But to answer specifically your question, that the Yetzara makes a person do an Avera, then a person wants to do good, he tells them, oh, you're not worthy of it. So let me tell you something that's extremely fundamental, and it's very important in life because I see it more and more with teenagers. It's very important. Hashem knows a person is going to sin in this world. Hashem was very aware and is very aware that B'nai Adam will do Averot. It should be once in a blue moon. It shouldn't be often. But Hashem is aware that this power called the Yetzirah, this power called desires is stronger than the human being. Yet Sarah is a spiritual force and we have our physical bodies. Spiritual beats physical. Wind can knock out mountains. Spiritual is stronger.
Hashem is aware that a person will do averot. That's why he created this concept called teshuva before he created the world. Now, what do you do about it? Hashem didn't leave you hanging. Hashem never points fingers on why a person does averot. Hashem does point fingers, and listen to this, Hashem does point fingers on why a person put himself in a situation to sin. We don't have the power to beat the Yitzhahara. But we do have the power not to put ourselves in a situations for the Yetzirah to beat us. For example, let's say a person can't control his eyes. Okay, He looks at immodest things. A person is a person. He's going to go after uh, immodest things with his eyes. Naturally, he's going to go after sin. So the question is not why are you sinning because a person is human. The question is why would you go to a place where you know you can't control your eyes? Or why would you hold a device that you know you cannot control your eyes with? You have the power to make sure you don't put yourself in a situation where the Sahara is going to corner you. It's like, let's say I tell you, that block over there, don't go there. There's a lot of robberies and people are going to mug you. Do you blame the guy if he goes in the block? Do you blame him being mugged? I mean, it's almost automatic. You can't fight these guys. They're much stronger than you. They're much more prepared and they, they know they're going to mug you. Well, you can blame the guy is why did you go down the block in the first place where you know you're going to get mugged? So too, when it comes to Yetzirah. Once you confront the Yetzirah, he's going to kill you. Yetzirah is much stronger than us. And Hashem said that he's much stronger than us. What could you do is avoid the Yetzirah. That is in your hands. The challenge is to avoid the Yetzirah as much as possible. Always be smart. Always think ahead. If I do this, what's going to happen? If I do this, what's going to happen? Is he going to get me? Is he going to make Is he going to make me chip and fall? The Yetzirah is always ahead of the game. But know that Hashem never points fingers on why you do a verot. Hashem points fingers on why you put yourself in the situation in the first place. Now, what does the Yetzirah do? I just read a beautiful line from Shlomo Hoffman. He was in Meshgiyah Chaneat Yisrael. Zichonor Revachah. Shlomo Hoffman said, Tzadikim don't beat the Yetzirah. Tzadikim, don't overcome the Yetzirah. Yetzirah is always going to be around to the last day of your life, 120. Yetzirah is always going to be here. Tzadikim, learn how to deal with the Yetzirah. I'm going to say it again. Righteous people never beat the evil inclination. Righteous people are people that learned how to deal with the evil inclination. You have to learn how to deal with the Yetzirah. You have to know how to handle him, how to tackle him. You have to know how to duck him if he tries to jump on you. When a person does an Averot, when a person chas v'shalom does an Avera once in a bit in a blue moon here and there, he should know that the Avera is a horrible thing. But it's even worse for a person to be depressed after the Avera. It's even worse for him to think that Hashem is not going to give him another chance. And the Yetzirah knows that. The Yetzirah is aware that a person can be very sad after he does the Avera. And he manipulates the person. And he takes him because he's vulnerable. He takes a person and he makes him do even more Averot and more Averot. Now how do you know that's wrong? Because as long as you're alive, if God is giving you life, if you woke up in the morning... Even though you sinned the day before, if you woke up in the morning, that means Hashem specifically that morning took your neshama and put it back in your body. So that means Hashem is telling you, yo, you have another day to live. Obviously, you can repent. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. So who are the people that can argue with God if God gave you life? Who are you to say, it's too late for me, I can never come back? That is the Yetzirah. The Yetzirah wants to tackle you, to think you can never come back. But the answer is, Rabotai, we grow with the Yetzirah. Every time you beat them, every time you get up, that's you grow and you grow in spirituality. It is never too late for anybody to come back to Kadosh Baruch Hu. As long as you're alive, you have the upper hand to get close to Hashem. Wow, I'm speechless. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is there drinks here? We have drinks. <laughs> Where's the iced coffee? No, no, I'm drinking. drinking. <laughs> um, so I wanted to maybe, maybe, maybe um, um, talk about the, maybe if you could if if you could um, elaborate about the Eight Sahara overcoming challenges and the power of not no, you're not in it alone. You're 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 with uh, good friends. You have a, a, a good chevra around you. How does how would that uh, affect uh, the Yitzhara? I mean, it's not like okay, it's myself versus versus the Yitzhara. No, it's it's me, my friends. Like like you're not. Welcome to the world, you say. Right. Yeah. Uh, very good question. Very good question. This is a very interesting topic, especially for teenagers. Okay, all the t the teenagers have to understand the holy holy teenagers. World, the world is standing on the teenagers. The next generation, who's going to run the next generation? Who's going to hold up the Torah? Who's going to dance by Simchat Torah? Who's going to fancy Yom Kippur? Who's going to keep Shabbos? 
the teens, the teens right in 2020, they're going to hold up, they're holding up the world right now, and they're the next generation that's going to uh, hold on to the torch of the Torah that we had from Moshe Rabbeinu and from Moses and Har Sinai. They have to understand, you're never in it alone. When a person does an Avera, if Chas Shalom once in a blue moon, it happens to be a guy sins, he has to understand he's not in it alone. The Yetzirah is extremely strong, and every person struggles. Even the biggest rabbis in the world, the Chachamim Talas and the Gemara, every rabbi has a Yetzirah. And the opposite is true. The bigger the righteous the person is, the bigger the tzaddik he is, the stronger the Yetzirah is. We know when it comes to wars, right? If you read history or all these things, Terrorists only mess with the big guys, right? Big armies go against big guys. If somebody is coming to you with thousands of, shoulder, of soldiers and tanks and airplanes and the most expensive and the biggest bombs and what's it called, F-35 and all these things, if somebody is confronting you, if they're confronting a nation with so, so much soldiers and such expensive weapons, it's because they know that the country that they're confronting are very strong. The stronger the country that you want to go to war with, the more weapons you need to have. So the Yet Sahara only attacks the people that make a difference in this world. So the more you see the Yet Sahara, once you do what's wrong, the more you see you're struggling harder. That's the biggest reason why you're the most righteous guy. If you see that you keep on falling, if you see the Yet Sahara, you know, why, 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 why you bother me? There's like 50 billion people in the world. Leave me alone. You know, it's the Zohar. The Zohar says, be foolish. The Zohar says, by Avraham Avinu and Lot. When we know Avraham Avinu and Lot, we're cousins. So, Lot and Avraham Avinu's sheep were around the same farms, let's say the, the same field. It ends up being that Lot, this person Lot, who was a tzaddik, a shah, we're not sure, but Lot, his sheep were eating other people's grass. So Avraham Avinu got upset because, you know, you're making a chil Hashem. I'm this uh, first Jew in the world, Mr. Jew. I go around and it ends up being that you're my relative stealing, stealing other people's uh, hay and grass. So Avraham Avinu told Lot, why are you next to me? The whole world is in front of you. There's so much land in front of you. You have to be next to my sheep. That's what Avraham Avinu told to Lot. The Zohar over there says, I read it from the Ben Ishchai. The Zohar says, one day we're going to tell the Yetzirah. We're going to tell this evil inclination that makes the whole world sin. We're going to tell them, why are you bothering us? You have the whole world to make them sin. The whole China. You have, you have so much people to make sin. There, you know, there's so many people in the world. What do you want from us? What do you want from the Jews in Queens, the Jews in Lakewood, the Jews in Brooklyn? Leave these teens alone already. What do you want from these guys? Why do you specifically target us? Why do you always come strong on us? Take your weapons and fight other people. There's plenty of people to fight. Leave us alone. The answer is, says the Zohar, you're not getting the point. The Yetzirah doesn't want to fight other people because there's no point of that. He wants to fight the good guys. He wants to fight the teenagers because he knows they are going to be the next generation. They're the ones who are going to be holding Judaism in the next generation. So he wants to get them. But you have to be strong. You have to understand it is in you to be a righteous person. It is within you to serve Hashem like anybody else. And just because you sinned, it does not mean you can't get up. Adarabah, like I said, if you fell and you see the desires are strong, it's because you're righteous. It's because you're worth a lot. Because you're worth a lot. That's what the Yitzhara wants to get you. So get up and move forward because it's within you. Well, amazing. I think we'll just end up with one last question for, uh, for tonight. Um, um, one question is, um, I, I heard a, a beautiful uh, mashal, mashal, a parable from Rabbi Eli Mansour Jalita. He said that, 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 that there was that that the, um, in in, um, in Green Bay in, in Wisconsin they have they, they have a football team it's called the Green Bay Packers and and they they play it and it's so cold down there and sometimes they play and it's like negative twenty degrees like below zero and and um, so so somebody was asking like like, like what is what, what is game football like he just came from another country he doesn't even know what football is whatever it is um, football you throw not 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 uh, not, not soccer where you, where you kick it but yeah um, so he, he was asking all these questions and everything so he said oh but there's also these, there's these fans in, in the crowd and and they're there and and what happens what's the game so so these fans what do you mean so what happened? they pay to to watch the game what like, like what. They're going and they're freezing for three hours, and 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 and, and some of them they don't even, they they don't even wear a shirt. They write like uh, defense, like spelled out on there, and and they and they're going 
and and they're freezing for three hours and they're gonna pay hundreds of dollars to watch it. So he said that so too we have to use that force that that in our mind. So so let's, let's just say an example. Let's say it's around Sukkot time. So so the person's like, oh, should I go outside? It's cold. Like this that. Like no. Like you have to learn from this guy who is who is who's who's paying who's freezing himself and, and getting sick and and just to, just to watch a game where he's not even in, not even playing in and whatever it is. So we have to learn for us to as as, as you. We're saying we get so much tremendous war in Olam Haba in the next world, and not, and almost not only in the next world, in the blessings in this world for keeping the mitzvot, and and we have to that we have to learn from this fan, these people who are, who are at the stadium there for we have to learn that to do the mitzvot. So maybe you can uh, just. Um, maybe um, talk about learning from the Eight Sahara and also just about using the the concept of reward and um, and blessings in our fight against the Eight Sahara. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna look around to the camera. This one. Okay, everybody's watching. Look into my eyes. Like, don't look at my eyes or whatever. I have to keep my glasses. But listen. There is nothing greater in the world than getting close to God. There is no greater enjoyment in life than getting closer and closer to the creator of the world. Whoever is looking to enjoy his life, whoever is looking for fun, whoever is looking for excitement, is Judaism you want to run after. Not money, not Florida, not cars, not houses, not food. You want to enjoy your life? Get close to Hashem as much as possible. You will have the funnest, funnest life ever. Now, how do I know that? Hashem, God created this beautiful world. Oh, God created all the fun stuff you can ever think of. There's a creator who created that, Hashem. And the same creator who created all the most enjoyable thing you can ever think of is the same creator who tells you, Hello, the most enjoyable thing is learning Torah. Who can argue with the same creator who created all the fun and he's telling you the funnest thing is learning Torah? Yes, you might not understand it in the beginning. You might not feel it in the beginning. And yes, you look at the whole world more than most of the world doesn't follow the Torah. But that means nothing. Because the creator of the world is telling you the greatest enjoyment is beating your desires. The greatest enjoyment is getting closer and closer to Hashem. One may think... Then when he becomes religious, let's say he starts keeping Shabbat. Let's say a guy is brave. In this society, he decides, I'm going to keep Shabbat. His parents don't keep Shabbat yet. His relatives don't keep Shabbat yet. He says, I'm going to be I'm going to be loyal to God in 2020. I'm going to keep Shabbat. No games. No games. I'm going to be loyal to God. I will keep Shabbat. He sits at home. He goes to shul. Then he sees his siblings or his cousins. They're going to the beach. Or they're going to the movies. So he's going to feel like, oh, I'm losing out on enjoyment in life. That's a mistake. When you become religious, when you keep Shabbat, you're exchanging small enjoyment for much bigger enjoyment. It's like me giving you pennies, and then I'm gonna, I give you like 10 shiny pennies, and then you give me a $100 bill. When you become religious, yes, you gave up the movies. You gave up going to the beach on Shabbos. You gave up your phone on Shabbos. You gave in the pennies, but God is giving you a $100 bill. The pleasure you get... When you serve Hashem, there is nothing like it in the world. So when you serve Hashem, you're not locked in. You're the happiest guy in the world. You know who says that? Oh my gosh, God himself, the creator of the world. Who can argue with such a thing? It's like imagine you go to a restaurant and you set their first course. You loved it. You and your wife are going on a date. Oh, you love the food, the first course. And the chef tells you, ha ha ha, you think that's good. Went until the second course. Are you going to trust the chef? Yes, because if the first course was good, why not the second course, the second dish? Hashem created all the fun stuff that you're enjoying. He created it. And he's telling you, hello, I'm the chef. You think that's fun. You think eating is fun. You think going to the beach is fun. Wait until you learn how to learn yourself the Gemara. Wait until you finish a Masechta. Wait until you start singing by a Shabbos table. Wait until you start controlling your eyes. You know how enjoyable it is for a person to be close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It is the most enjoyable thing in the world. So if anybody is looking for fun, do not follow society. Do not follow your neighbors who tell you, go make money, go to college for 20 years, go, money is going to make you happy. Yes, you need to go to college, you go to college. You need to make money, you make money. But what's the purpose of everything? To get even closer to God, not to further you and distance you away from God. You go to work to get closer to God. You go to college to have a good job, to get even closer to Hashem. But everything is a purpose to have fun. What is the funnest thing? Getting closer and closer to Kadosh Baruch Hu. You want to enjoy life? 
Get closer and closer to Hashem. Be that brave guy or girl. Be loyal to Hashem and you're going to see, you're going to be the happiest person alive. Amazing. Um, <clears throat> so I think we'll, we'll stop here for tonight. We want to tell you this is a brand new series. And uh, not only you, you, you who's watching right now, but, but tell your friends and family um, and, and teenage friends and uh, etc. to tune into this series. Not only to tune in and to watch and, and be a bystander, but you should be active and, and submit questions every week, uh, which will be um, addressed. Email us at events.chazak.org. Um, thank you, Abba Thank you very much.